How's it going everyone? Today, uh, just going to do a quick comparison of the uh, Steinhardt Ocean 39 uh, GMT 500 versus the uh, Invicta Pro Diver. This is the 8.9. I always forget the reference number. This is the Swiss one with the sleet of movement. This is the 9937 OB. So this is kind of the uh, upgraded version of the Pro Diver. Somebody mentioned to me in one of the comments that uh, I should do a comparison of these two watches and I thought, hey, you know, that's kind of a good idea. So I'll just make a quick one. I think these are two sort of popular watches to consider uh, when someone's looking for an homage watch or Rolex Inspiration expired watch. Um, so in any case, here we go. So these are the two watches here. I'll First of all, this is the premium version, okay? So it's a little bit different than the standard uh, Steinhardt Ocean 1 and it's also the GMT so they're not necessarily directly comparable uh, but that's all I've got right here so um, yes I'm aware that they're different models. So first of all the price. A regular Ocean 1 is about $450 US. Um, this watch here is about 680 something dollars US. I live in Canada, so I forget the exact US pricing. This watch here is about 250 to 300 dollars US, if I recall. I purchased this one on Black Friday uh, a couple years ago for 170 dollars US. So I got a really good deal on this one. I bought this one used. So first of all, I guess I'll talk brand first. Um, Invicta versus Steinhard. Um, you know. Obviously in the watch community, both brands are a bit controversial. Uh, Steinhardt mostly controversial because they really focus heavily on the old, on the homage market. Uh, Invicta because they also focus very heavily on homage market. I've even noticed them making Seiko homages, Samurai homages, 52MAS homages. Uh, so, you know, they, they do that too, but they also make a lot of nutty, you know, 55mm, 60mm enormous tractor tire watches that for me are not appealing uh, just too huge too big and uh, kind of almost cartoony in my opinion just to me the sort of over-the-top nature uh, I don't I don't really feel that that's that's not something I'm interested in it's kind of like driving a bright orange car or something like that that's just not me it's a little too over the top but in any case as far as brand goes both brands are quite controversial but I would say probably overall in the watch game uh, Steinhardt probably gets a little bit more uh, intrigue or I don't want to know if I want to say respect but more people seem to accept Steinhardt's over Invictus like people accept the pro divers but then that's about it so overall both controversial brands um, but both both good you know if you like them that's really all that matters I like both of them. I don't like the crazy Invictus, but I like the Pro Divers. Uh, you know, overall though, I think I'd probably give the brand edge to Steinhardt just because uh, it's a little bit more appealing to me personally. I, uh, it's just not quite as TV shopping, you know, five thousand dollars, but today it's one hundred ninety nine bucks just for you sort of deal. So, um, case finishing. I'm gonna have to assume that this case finishing is very similar to the standard Ocean One. I've never actually held one, but I would imagine it's basically the same. I would say overall that the case finishing on the Steinhardt is better. It should be because it costs more, but it's the, and to me the Invicta the case finishing is where this watch kind of falls flat. A, it's got this big logo here. Not a fan of that. I don't like when Blanc Pond does it. I don't like when Squale does it. I don't like when Invicta does it. Not a fan of that. But if you can see there, you can see the striations and the polishing. It's a little bit rough. Um, the polish itself not quite as shiny as the as uh, you know some higher end watches. But you got to remember price too. But in any case, this watch I think the finishing and just the polishing is not quite as good as the Steinhardt. There's a bit more gap there. The Steinhardt bracelet fitting is definitely not perfect. But for me, it's just the different striations and the finishing lines that you know, make the finishing a little bit less premium than the Steinhardt. You also see, uh, you know, the inside of the bracelet, there's definitely, like you can see right here, it's finished a little rough. Um, it's pretty rough, you know, inside the clasp to basic. So, 
overall, I'd have to give the edge to the Steinhardt, just because I think the Steinhardt steps it up a bit, right? The brushing, in my opinion, is better. It's finer. Uh, you can't see the striations in the lines quite as well. And uh, it matches the bracelet more. If you notice here, um, with the bracelet fitment, the case and the bracelet have a different brushing. Whereas on the Steinhardt, a little different, but fairly pretty, pretty damn close, to be honest with you. The bracelet, bracelet fits the case a little nicer too, um, and overall I just think that the Steinhardt finishing is better, but keep in mind that the Steinhardt does cost a lot more, so you know, it damn well better be better, right? You gotta pay for something. Um, the backs finish a little nicer than the Invicta, but frankly the Invicta is not too bad, it's pretty good, but overall I think the Steinhardt, the edges and the finishing with the Steinhardt. Um, the movement, so here's a little bit unfair. This has a better movement, straight up. This has the ETA 2893 GMT. This is the Elaborate, it's a higher, higher end version than uh, what's in this Invicta. However, if we were to just assume that we're comparing a standard Ocean One, they have the same movement as this Invicta. The Salita SW200, or in some Steinharts, there's a ETA 2824. Uh, for me, I have both movements in multiple watches. I've never noticed a difference between a, with a ETA or a Salita, so I'd give them about even. For these two specific watches, this has the edge, but if you're comparing just a standard Ocean One to the Invicta Pro Diver 9937, um, same movement, so I'd, I'd probably draw them about even there. The dial, uh, the Invicta has a has a applied indices, whereas the Steinhardt has printed. Um, here's the thing, I think that the dial on the Steinhardt is a little nicer and I'll tell you why. First of all, the loom is much better than the Invicta, the Invicta has a very poor loom. Um, I just think it's a little easier to read, the indices are bigger. Um, it's not quite as similar to a Rolex. It doesn't really copy the text lines as a Rolex. Uh, it doesn't. It has the date at the six o'clock, which is a little nicer. But this one's no slouch. I, this one, the loom, as I said, is poor. I think the indices on these are a little small, frankly. Um, but I don't know. I, I think that the Invicta logo looks fine. It's applied, so it's tough to tell because this one has all the sort of spec features. It's got applied markers, loomed, all that sort of thing, but then this one I think is just a little more legible, a little easier to read, uh, it just looks a little nicer. However, there's, I don't really like the text where it says Ocean 39 GMT 500. Uh, I prefer this text here, it's a little more subtle. The word where it says Ocean on the Steinhardt is really huge, so, uh, you know, not my favorite, but I'd, I'd give the edge to the Steinhardt dial just because I think it's easier to read. I like it a little better than the Invicta one, but very similar. Screwing this down, the movement, the sorry, the screwing the crown down and the action of the crown feels better on the Steinhardt. The Invicta's good, really good for the price, but when you screw this down, the Steinhardt is just a little smoother, a little more premium, uh, as you'd expect it to be. So the crystals on these watches. Steinhardt has a much nicer crystal. This has flame fusion crystal, whereas this has a domed sapphire with anti-reflective coating. I don't think there's a reflective coating on the Invicta. I can't find any information, but as you can see, it definitely reflects more. But, uh, you know what? When I look at them, it actually doesn't really look like it reflects more, but... In any case, flame fusion is basically like a coated, sort of a hard lex crystal type thing, coated with sapphire, or some sort of sapphire coating, whereas this is straight sapphire. So this is a better crystal than this watch here. I've never had a problem with this, but overall, sapphire is better. Bracelet. This is not the standard Steinhardt bracelet, but I have the standard one, the standard Oyster one, and the quality of that and this is the same. Uh, versus the Invicta, I would say that the Steinhardt is a little better. It has screws, uh, whereas the Invicta has clipping pins. The clasps on them are very similar, frankly. If you see here, the, the, they just are a friction clasp, and basically they look identical. Where this one hits here, it's, just, it's the same design overall. Um, I'd give the edge in the class of the Steinhardt again because just because this is stamped, I think this is stamped, but it's just thicker. It's thicker, it feels a little nicer. The Invicta is definitely thinner. And so, overall, 
I'd give the edge to the Steinhardt in terms of the clasps and the bracelets, just because this one's clipping pins. I don't think this one's quite finished as nicely either. If you, as I showed you earlier, the details on, you know, the soldering here is, or whatever, however this is used, I guess it's pressed or something, but just not as good. If you see the finishing down here, it's just, yeah, you can see it's rough. Definitely not as good. Um, however, for the price, this is a nice bracelet. So, you know, it's a bit of a cop-out, but I'd say for the price that this is good, but overall, uh, I prefer the Steinhardt bracelet. Bezels. Um, Steinhardt bezel. This is not a true GMT bezel. It's only unidirectional, and it has ceramic. Invicta bezel. This Invicta bezel kind of surprised me. Like, Right? It's a good sounding bezel. It works well. It doesn't hiccup. I have the cheaper model, uh, ProDiver 2. And I find that that bezel for my copy uh, got stuck quite well, easily. It was hard to move. It would get stuck when you get around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. This bezel, overall, I'd say is definitely a little better. It's a little louder. But again, it's tough because you're expecting better for the price, right? So, with that being said, this given that this one's ceramic, but however it costs more, I'm going to give the bezels a tie because the action is so close, and I don't think that the price difference, or difference with the Steinhardt versus the Invicta can maybe justify it. But I think that if this bezel action is the same on the more affordable Steinhardt, it's probably going to be better than this one overall. Lastly, there's the homage, homage factor. This is a bit tough because this is going to be... <laughs> you know, dependent on both what these watches are. Um, this is not a direct homage, whereas this one is, right? This one has the Mercedes hands, it has the same text, it has the Cyclops, the date's in the same place, uh, you know, the bezel style's identical. So it's tough to use the homage factor comparing these two identical watches, exactly. Um, if you're getting the regular Steinhardt, uh, I would say that the homage factor between the Invicta and the Steinhardt is basically the same. Their, their homages are the same design, so, you know, there's no edge there. I would probably, again, say give a plus to the Steinhardt just because, for me, the Invicta, this logo is too much. Um, it's a little, you know, it's, it's a little different. It's a little less homage -y. This one and the case design itself is a little less homage -y. If you compare Rolexes, like this is a real carbon copy, frankly, of a Rolex. But homage factor, I, I in my perspective, since this has a little bit different, it's less homage factor. Uh, that's my preference. However, this watch is more similar to the Rolex, the non-super case Rolex. So, you know, the, the way that the case looks... Um, the dial, mostly the case, honestly, it, it more directly homages Rolex's, Rolex Submariner than the Steinhardt does in terms of the case design. And the regular regular Ocean Ones have the same case type, type 2. So, you know, if you consider that this is a more of an homage watch than this is, then that might mean it is better for you. It really depends on what you're looking for. For me, something that differentiates it slightly is a little bit more of a plus, but, but again, if you're looking for more of a direct homage design, uh, the Invicta would probably win out. So it honestly depends on your perspective. Overall, my final thoughts on these two watches. Um, it's a cop-out, but frankly, if I was to only have one, I'd rather have the Steinhardt. I personally would rather have the one that costs a bit more. That's got a little bit nicer finishing, a little bit nicer details. But, you know, if you are not that kind of person, if you don't want to spend that much and, you know, the, the cost difference is not there for you, I, I don't think you can go wrong with the Pro Diver, any Pro Diver. This Pro Diver is very good. I think this is the best version of the Pro Diver, in my opinion. Um, it's a great watch. Overall, I'd give the edge to the Steinhardt, but, uh, you know, both of them are no slouch. So, uh, kind of a cop-out answer, I know, but I think this one's better, but this is an excellent watch as well. So thank you for watching, take care, and bye-bye.